So I'm going to play a piece by um, a chap called Johan Agrell. This originally the music was published in Sweden. Uh, Agrell was a Swedish composer in 1740, but Agrell, like many um, people during the early 18th century as a, a sort of a cultured artist, made many tours into Europe and, and a further afield. And he was a big hit in London. So this music was also published by the company of Walsh in the 1760s um, as a set of sonatas by the famous Johann Agrell. So I'll be playing the first moment of an E minor sonata and I'll use these contrasting sounds. So I'll be using the machine stop to change the tone quickly. And in the second half of the piece, you'll also hear me use the, um, so we call it a nazard, which is the rather nasal, different, close plucking sort of sound.
In choosing the repertoire for this um, demonstration of these instruments, it's one of the great pleasures of my life is of thinking of kind of what would people at the time have played if they'd had that sort of instrument. And the nice thing is, is of course, to go a little bit sideways at it and think, who was around, who was playing. The one thing that's always I always like to remember is, is that people were probably playing fairly up-to-date music, contemporary music, because that meant something very different then. People were always on for the latest music. They weren't necessarily looking at old music. On the other hand, old music that was popular and successful and got reprinted many times was clearly very important to them, to players and, and um, musicians and, and general amateurs at the time as well. So my joy is always thinking, when was the instrument made? Where was it made? And what would have sort of been the sort of things that people might have come to it? And then of course there are practical things, like some of these keyboards have fewer notes um, than maybe other keyboards at the same time, so that kind of might put a, um, uh, restrictions on what repertoire I choose. Um, also, um, a lot of music from this time is interchangeable. Some of it, some of the later music says for harpsichord or pianoforte, this newfangled instrument that was coming around with publishers with an eye to both um, for maximizing sales. So sometimes, even though they say this is for piano or harpsichord, it's quite clearly for one or the other. So one has to be a little bit clever and creative. Um, and also, um, just generally, uh, music that really suits the character of the instruments, I even though that there's no uh, designation on title page for whether it should be played on a virginals or a harpsichord or a spinet or, as I say, even an organ or a piano sometimes, sometimes you can quite clearly see that something needs a, a larger, more noble sound or something would just sound exquisite on the more sort of quiet and subtle instruments like the virginals. In moving from all these different instruments and the different styles, it always takes about five minutes just to 
work out exactly um, how to actually put my fingers on the keys and get the right sound out of the instrument. So for example, um, a harpsichord like this has a lot more, um, you've got th up to three quills per note plucking, so you've got to feel those plucks and, and work out exactly what the minimum weight you need to make the action work reliably is, compared to say the virginals where you've just got one very delicate um, quill plucking a rather thinner string it feels and and the balance points as well the way that the pivot of the key is Positioned really affects how much weight you need So the first thing I do is I just spend a couple of minutes running my fingers up and down a keyboard to find out exactly the sort of weight that's needed then of course there's the other um, issue that when you play an organ the cutoff of the note is even more critical than it is on a harpsichord and it's fairly critical on a harpsichord because it's an essential part of the articulation but on the organ where you bring the note off can actually sort of completely change the sound of a chord or a harmony with the other stringed instruments you can have a little bit of after ring so it doesn't always isn't always quite so critical the piano of course we've got the added um, pleasure of dynamics. So how hard you press the note. So you've got to find again the weight that's needed in order to have maximum control. So it just takes a five minute um, couple of scales and a couple of little sort of chords just to remember where all those um, different subtleties lie. And that comes from an awful lot of time moving from one keyboard to another with no time to change, adjust between them. As I was demonstrating to public in my um, sort of training years at the Finch Cox Musical Museum, this feeling of sitting down to keyboard and thinking, OK, how does this work? What does it do? And just learning and working out how to get the best sound out of instruments. So it's taken quite a bit of time to feel confident moving quickly between these different styles of instruments. And if I'm doing a concert just on harpsichord or just on piano, if I'm doing a, a concert of Beethoven sonatas and I've just come from playing Bach's Goldberg variations, I will give myself a good couple of days to immerse myself back in a piano world, regenerate those muscles and that subtlety. It's, it's not always an instantaneous process, but just on a demonstration like this, just a good five minute, 10 minute head clearing and a bit of technical workout just to see um, exactly what the nuances of every individual instrument are. So the normal sound of the strings plucked towards, further towards the centre of them is a rather rich rounded sound. But if we bring the close plucking set of quills on, you get this wonderfully sort of much more nasal sound, which is called the nasard or the lute stop. The left hand pedal controls the machine stop and what that allows me to do is to go from full harpsichord to just one register very quickly. With the pedal. So in order to demonstrate the nags head swell we've put the whole of the lid down. And if you watch carefully, when I press the right hand pedal, the right hand section of the lid lifts up under my control. It's quite a stiff spring, so it's quite hard to do it very subtly, but there we go. And as you can see, it's got the wonderful effect of looking as if it's talking to you. And the effect is quite marked as well. So with it open, and if I carry on playing, allows me to create that sort of effect.